Hi, I'm Michelle Sohan from Bake Retreats in Chaguanas, owner and cake artist. Well, I know wedding cake started way back in the Victorian period. Um, it was initially done as a gesture for um, the king to his queen. Uh, part of it was the fruit cake that was meant to last for quite a while. And um, over the years, the tradition has evolved. It is a, ser a very symbolic um, gesture as part of the reception of all weddings. The cutting of the cake symbolizes sharing, and that is the first thing the couple share as, as they get married. Um, we have a tradition of keeping the top tear, which is kept for the first anniversary, or in some cases, the first baby shower, the first baby, whichever one comes first. Um, this weekend, actually, we are celebrating first anniversaries for two cakes last year, done for our couples. So we uh, we will be, we'll be covering them over as a token to give back to the brides. So what I did is that I do have one of the one of the most traditional wedding cakes is a white wedding cake. However, besides it being a simple covered cake with just some flowers, we're now adding embellishments just to take it up a notch and to go with probably a fashion theme or some sort of um, decoration that the bride or the groom sometimes he has a say very very rare but he does um, about what the cake should look like so I'm doing a forte cake here um, I started this here is a very common pattern now it looks very elegant because we put beads on and um, we mark it with a stitching tool so to give it that to give it that effect so what I will do is first of all when we're stacking cakes is that we must make sure that they well um, structured you don't want to have at the end of the day a cake falling down that would be very embarrassing especially if it happens during the reception we have heard of situations where it did happen so I literally put structures in on each layer as I stack and as we continue I will then put on the next tear. Um, what I have done, so my next tear is here. I will now lift it off and center it onto the cake. Make sure that it's all centered. And then we go on to what the structure. Wanted, what did we tell you? Well, what we have, we have some brides who come in and they know what they want. They have browsed on the internet. They have, you know, seen so many websites. They have seen pictures of cakes that they like. A lot of brides are going with themes. We have like a beach theme. We have a fashion inspired theme. So she might come in with a picture of her wedding dress and she wants me to incorporate some of the embellishments, which may be lace, maybe ruffles, maybe gems. Um, the bustier is also a very, very nice touch where we actually create a fabric effect looking like a bustier. We actually would carve the cake to shape as well. Um, we have people who go with crystal teams, um, under the sea. It's, it's amazing. You know, this weekend we actually did one that was an Indian themed wedding, but it was incorporated with peacocks. So I had the joy of coming up with a design that incorporated both peacocks and Indians and it was really really smashing my bride was very happy oh yes and one of the one of the the amazing things is that when I started many years ago the bakery is now 12 years when I started at home before people never used black they never used purple these are all colors now that are being used on the cakes and it's quite amazing because it's beautiful. The designs are actually so nice and it's so good to have that variation. The bold colors are now actually very, very popular. So I'll just turn this here and make sure it's centered. I started doing a little bit on the cake so that we'll have a idea of how it will look at the end. Um, it's amazing. What I like is that the brides are now well informed. You know, social media has brought in a whole different aspect to planning a wedding. 
only yesterday we actually became a sponsored vendors for WeddingWire.com and Brides.com. So Baker Treats is now listed as the preferred cake decorator for Trinidad and Tobago. So any brides coming into destination weddings, they can now um, choose us for their designs. I've been baking for 16 years. I actually started because of an accident. I was working in the food industry and I suffered an accident there. And what ended up happening was that I was at university and we had a cake sale and I decided to ask my sister to do some of the cakes for me because I never baked before. And we had such a lovely response to the um, taste of the cakes and people came back and said do you do you take orders and I said yes I do and that's how it started actually then I learned so that's one of the things I'd like to tell people you know we never know what part we're going to be in in the future but be open God has his ways of showing us you know directions that would be best for us I absolutely now love cake decorating I live on dream cakes I you know there's, there's never a moment I'm not thinking of a design or some sort of technique. Tell me about flavor, because I know the tradition is to have a fruit cake. Right, well, fruit cakes were actually, fruit cakes were actually the flavor, the most popular flavor many years ago. We have seen a switch now into flavors. I just discussed with a bride her options in terms of cardamom, using amaretto. Um, we have cookies and cream, we have chocolate fudge, we have red velvet. All of these are flavors that the brides are going for because there's something that everybody enjoys. And then you can switch, if you're doing more than one tear, you can choose more than one flavor. And what that allows you to do is if you're gonna share it for a guest, or what, what is usually the case in Trinidad is that the cakes are usually kept for the second Sunday. You can actually have a nice dessert assortment out of your wedding cake. Cost can vary. We can start with a simple three-tier cake, which would which, which would start at twenty-five hundred. Basic designs, some basic piping, some little flowers, and then it can go very high based on the amount of time and the techniques that I have to work on. It may even go up to. We've done cake. We've actually had a few cakes that we've done like twelve thousand, fifteen thousand. It all depends on the budget of the of the bride and what she wants on the cake. When bling, the bling um, whole theme came up last year, you know, the gems were quite expensive. We can't do them edible, but what we found is that in Trinidad, because of the humidity, based on where the wedding cake is being set up, it may not be a good idea. So if we do use inedible gems, the bride is very well aware that it's not to be eaten. It has to be taken off the cake first. What we've also encouraged is using dummy cakes in the cases where um, people are not going to use all the cake, it may be a small wedding, but again, the wedding cake, apart from the bride and her dress, is a centerpiece for the reception. So you want something that will be remembered. And at the end of the day, we may use dummy cakes, which would help to give the grandeur effect, but not as expensive. Well, it's very important that the cake represents the couple. Um, it has to have some form of uniqueness in it. So you're not sure what you want, but you would have at least have an idea of what colors you would be working with. You most times brides are referred to us by event planners and decorators. Um, we do have some brides who are customers of ours from way back when, when we started. So they, they knew up front that they were coming to us. Most cases, though, if you're coming from an event planner, you would, you would have started with some sort of discussion and theme. And all we need to do is we need to work with what may have been discussed already in terms of your colors. Um, you, may be using, you may be using a lot of bright colors. Um, you may be using a lot of florals. Once we get an idea of what's being used, then it's very easy for us to say, okay, well, let's show you some examples of, you know, cakes that 
we have done and we also would take the time to browse the internet and pull up ideas because of course um, you know nowadays there's just so many options um, one of the things we need to zoom in on is is the bride a classic bride is she traditional or is she going into the you know the funky and the can you know way out there she wants something out of the box she wants something to say oh this is us you know we're bold and we're different and we have cases of like that very good do um well in the beginning i would have to say they were silent <laughs> now we actually we've had cakes where grooms were the ones who chose them um, as a present for their brides and of course i'm always you know keeping my fingers crossed that they know what she likes but <laughs> but we we we've have we have a lot of cases where both bride and groom comes in and they would go through you know that he has no say because you know it all boils down to whatever she likes but at the end of the day you know he's there and that's important i mean you're starting a life together something as important as choosing a cake it should be both people we actually did a cake two weekends ago for a lovely couple Sad sadia and kailash where we incorporated both a groom's cake and a bride's cake in one so we did half in white and we did half in batman <laughs> yes and up to yesterday she messaged me and said people are still talking about the cake more than she or the groom for the wedding <laughs> oh most definitely most definitely we got cakes we i've had two cakes that were just chosen as and and the theme and and labeled as the most beautiful wedding cakes in the world for a magazine that's coming out in the US in September and um, everybody talks about the cake now what we're seeing decorators doing is they're putting the cake table as the center of the reception hall so it's viewed from all angles as opposed to just being put on one end which was what normally um, a cake would do on a stage so you know there are so many different concepts that are arising I'm very happy that I've been able to view and experience all of these and I'm part of the change I'm happy to be part of the pioneering process in cake decorating in the country um, we've done cakes in Tobago we started doing some cakes in um, Barbados because we just um, installed PayPal we just took our first order from London um, for a bride that is coming down in November to get married so we're all over On average, a cake might take as, as short as two hours after baking for covering with the fondant and then decorating. And some cakes take me hours. Um, it all depends on the piping. You know, I'm actually very well known for the Mahindi piping. Um, my very first cake in my showcase was an Indian inspired cake because we were doing so many Hindu weddings and they were just regular cakes that were being done and I wanted to do something that was more traditional. In fact, this is what actually led me to my win in, in Miami recently, the, the henna piping. Um, so those cakes take a little longer because you have to hand pipe and then you have to um, pan paint if we're going with silver or gold. And so some cakes I've actually worked on for like nine hours, 10 hours, I'd have to break up the time. Um, but at the end of it all, it's all worth it. The finished, the finished product. So what I'm doing here is that, as I said, we have different, I wanted to incorporate the diff some of the different styles. So what I'm doing is a beautiful ruffle style. Um, when ruffles came into play um, to about two years ago, they were all done horizontally. Now we're seeing cakes with ruffles vertically, so it creates a different effect. So as you turn the cake, you know, you get a really nice effect. Um, this is simply done by rolling the fondant. Um, I use satinized fondant. This is simply done by rolling um, strips of fondant. Um, we have to, of course, cut them at the same um, thickness at all times. I just put a little cornstarch here and I use this tool. So I use a tip and I will just roll and create a ruffle effect. As simple as that. Of course, one layer, as you can see, takes many ruffles, so you just have to multiply it in terms of the amount that you would have to do and the time it would take.
And once we have the ruffle done, then we put it on. I'm just using basic water um, because fondant is a sugar-based. Water is acts as an adhesive very easily, so it's quite um, a good medium to work with. And of course, maintaining um, food safety in terms of not having any chemicals in it. So we create this ruffle effect, and then the next layer, what I'm doing is, so we try to do as much ruffles as possible. Um, of course, I do have an assistant, so she- No layer looks the same, basically. And no layer looks the same. If you wanted a full cake in ruffles, we can do a full cake in ruffles. If you wanted a full cake in this lace pattern, we can do a full cake. This is actually very common when we're doing for um, dresses and fashion inspired. Um, there was an article that was written on fashion inspired cakes in, um, in Caribbean Wedding Bells some time ago and I actually, the editor chose wedding dresses and I actually did cakes to match them. So that was quite exciting as well. At the end of the day, it all boils down to being creative and having that vision to be able to see from one medium to another how you could incorporate it and transpose the, the elements. And once you can get at least one, one aspect that stands out and that would actually identify um, with the, the, the project you're working on, if it's a dress, for instance, that you're trying to incorporate, it makes a big difference. So when I finish this ruffle, I'll just finish off this last one here. Um, again, the same process I used to put on the, um, the lace flowers. Um, I started putting on the beads here. This, of course, gives a pop from just a basic, a basic flat um, design. It now incorporates some color, and it makes the entire thing look look a lot richer. The next step I would do is I would actually add. My intention is is to add a bling band because all brides love bling. So I'm going to use royal icing in this case um, if we were doing a cake that was eggless we would have to use um, again water and a little bit of the fondant melted because this has eggs in it okay. egg whites it's made with egg whites so what I literally do is I just make a little average of a strip to go around and then I would take my band and put it on So immediately the cake gets transformed with a little more bling. And we have brides that actually tell us the more bling the better. So it's, 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 it all depends on what the bride wants. Some people want touches and then some people want a lot. So we just secure this. It takes a little bit of time to dry. What I would do in the meantime is because details is quite important is that I will actually come and just brush out some of the royal that you see because that's not part of the design at and then the next step is I would just pipe on a border. So we need to get a border at the bottom. We could actually use the bling itself again because we would want it to balance off if we were looking at it from this angle, we would want it to balance. So um I have some more cut here so it matches top and bottom and I will just put it on. Shall I just have a rose, a bunch of roses, so white roses. Huh? And we go around the cake to this end. And then I change my tip and we would put on another pattern such as this one which is more like a shell and then I'm going to finish off the edge here so I'm just going to pipe neatly and as uniformly as possible to get that effect Well, it, it used to be. It's now a case of knowing where you're going. 
Um, if we, we, there are some locations that we need to go with all cakes flat and then we stop there and we work on it, in which case we need to give ourselves time to be able to work on a cake. And then there are some cases that it's literally more or less a straight road with very few bumps. Um, so we can stack cakes and go with it. Um, it all depends on the structure that we put into the cake. We have no problems in terms of flavors of cakes being easier or harder to transport. It's all about the knowledge of, you know, knowing where you're going, what your structure is like, what your setup. We do a lot of topsy-turvy cakes, so those, um, those have to go flat and then we set up when we go to the venue. Um, how long will batch a bride book a cake? Ideally, a bride should book at least four months in advance. Um, what we have found is that a lot, um, in a lot of cases, venues are being booked up quite quickly. So people are now booking a year in advance. And because of this timing, they're actually coming in. We've have, we have um, brides who have booked a year in advance for their cakes. We actually even have people who have booked weeks in advance. And we may have some last minute orders as well. But three months, I would say, three to four months is actually the best time because it gives the bride enough time to plan everything else and to definitely, if she's not sure of what she wants, um, she has that t le le length of time to be able to confirm this is it, okay, we're going to get this, let's plan it, let's get what we need to. We do all our, all when we quote a bride, we provide everything. Um, from the, um, the bling to the beads to the board to whatever the topper might be unless it's something that is um, that we don't have um, that gives us enough time to source it we had brides who had specific requirements so they brought in their, their toppers um, what we've seen recently is that a lot of brides are going with initials so there's a company here who's doing acrylic and initials and it looks lovely on the cake. So you get your surname at the top with a bride and groom. Um, the traditional figurines are not as popular anymore. Um, we have those you know, new things like probably just a bunch of flowers or something very simple. What I would do is I would just now finish it off with some flowers. Um, the flowers will be dependent on what the bride may choose. So um, again, all those questions are asked at the beginning. They may have specific colors. So it's very important to know um, what her color scheme is. Sometimes sometimes we, we are the ones, we are responsible for um, advising on how the color should be applied because you could visualize how things would look at the end um, as opposed to a bride saying I want a full pink cake and pink flowers and you know it looks a little bit too heavy at the end of the day so you know it's very important as a decorator to advise properly um, have the vision of the bride as well as know that this is a commitment somebody is depending on you on their special day to deliver um, we have to make sure that we are on time, we've done our best, we've, we've done even better than expected. Um, we want the bride to be happy, comfortable, and most importantly, we look forward to the beautiful pictures that come after. It's her memory forever. So, you know, that is, that again, cutting the cake is such an important, an important moment. And what I would do here is I would just put this little Just Married at the top. And there you go.